On this Tobacco University video, I'm going to go over spectrum comparisons and photon efficacy for cannabis production. So we're going to try to give you some comparisons between different spectrum produced by common light sources. All right, let's get into spectrum comparisons. And if we look just at the title slide here, looking at a regular day, dawn, midday, and dusk, we can see how the overall wavelengths and intensities can change throughout just a single day. But here we're gonna focus a little bit, something a little more consistent indoor lighting. So first off, I have a good reference article here. If you're interested and want some more information, definitely recommend you check this out, provided with some links and the proper citations here. Uh, so you can go through and read the details if you want for yourself. I'm gonna provide a summary. So we're looking at photon efficacy here. Uh, note that photon efficacy of HPS lights is about 1.7 to allow you for that general comparison um, here um, to the numbers provided. Compare that to the red LED chips, which are 2.6 times the efficiency. So if we look at our LED kind of red here at 4.5, and HPS lights are only about 1.7 for that comparison. The conversion of uh, efficiency of photons efficacy depends on spectral distribution. We want to be aware of exactly what wavelengths are being produced by that particular um, light source. So plant action spectrum. So plant action spectra associated with the primary classes of photosensitive, photosensitive molecules in plants. Action spectrum for the cryptochromes that are not yet well established. So just be aware we have chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. I think most people are probably familiar with at least hearing those terms. And we could see here, we can have a very strong absorbance down in that bluish kind of wavelengths. And then another peak over here where we're getting closer to that orange or red um, areas there. And these are measured in wavelengths, which we'll see in future slides here on this presentation. So first off, when we're talking about light in general, I thought this picture was kind of interesting just to show light pollution on a soybean crop. So if we're looking at the kind of soybean field here, and we're seeing a roadway, we're noticing these like dark green kind of like little, almost like bubble areas. And we'll notice those correlate with street lights. So this shows a great visual of how light pollution or light can impact um, plants here. And we see this again on a soybean field, which is the street lights impact on some of the green coloration we see in this crop. So looking at metal halides to HPS, uh, flip for cannabis. Some people will grow in a metal halide at the veg and then flip over when they go to the flowering stage, go to high pressure sodiums. And that's usually a metal halide for 18 hour days and high pressure sodium and flower for 12 hours. Metal halides have about 30% blue to keep plants short with tight internodes. HPS only has about 4% blue, but is still a very efficient light because of the red orange spectrum it produces. Green photons are important for visual disease diagnosis. And as a source of comparison, sunlight does have about 30% blue light in it as well. So as I mentioned, those kind of pictures, uh, uh, graphs that we'll see here, here we're looking at a sunlight spectrum, just to kind of give you an idea, looking at mainly that PAR range, UVB, UVA, far red, and kind of the Roy G. Biv spectrum here for light frequency produced. And it's a 1 to 30 UVB to UVA ratio for uh, sunlight spectrum. If we go to high pressure sodium spectrum, we're noticing just if we go back and forth for just a couple seconds, here's sunlight, here's high pressure sodium, back and forth, we're seeing a massive change here uh, in the amount of light frequency that's produced by the high pressure sodium spectrum. Then we also have some grow light spectrum. These are white LEDs producing 3,500 uh, Kelvin. Um, again, to give you just that comparison of what, what spectrum is being produced by some of these lights, but you should always be checking with your specific light uh, bulb or manufacturer should be able to provide you with one of these um, spectrum graphs. So also, in addition, we, if you're not aware of, there's something called the DLC, which is the Design Light Consortium for Light Efficiency. It's an independent company that lists many lights from different manufacturers and publishes test results for the efficiencies of lights. 2.5 and greater micromoles per joule is considered to be a very efficient light. And this is kind of a nonprofit organization that can help kind of provide you with some more details and information potentially about lights that you might be considering purchasing so you make the best selection for your grow area. 
And again, as always, if you want to learn more, I've provided you with some great names here to go through, take a look. Special thanks to them and the research, of course, that they've done to contribute to the information presented here uh, and research all over so you can hopefully become an informed consumer when you're looking at purchasing lights.